Hello, everybody. Uh, we have uh, Ahmad Abul Saad uh, talking about uh, how to easily use cross language transforms uh, through the uh, schema transforms API. And Ahmad has been, uh, you know, uh, working on Beam for a couple of years, I believe, and uh, uh, he's primarily working on uh, Beam IO connectors, and he's also a, a engineer at Google. So take it away. Thank you. Uh, yeah, my name is Ahmed, and like Chaim said, I want to talk to you about how to uh, easily use cross-language transforms with schema transforms. And this is a Python pipeline using Java transform scenario. Um, so a little bit about me. I'm Egyptian. I was born and raised in Qatar. And I came to the US for university at Duke. And uh, like Cham said, I've been working at Google as a software engineer for the past, like, almost two years. And um, most of the time, I've, I've been working on uh, Beam connectors, IOs, and mainly the BigQuery IO connector for Java and Python SDKs. Um, so first, I'll briefly talk about why cross-language itself is, is important for Beam. And then I'll explain what a schema transform is and how it's a solution for the cross-language problem. Uh, and then I'll show you how to create a schema transform and then um, how to make it discoverable in a expansion service. And then we'll have a demo showing how all this works. And then afterwards, we'll talk about some like current limitations and unknowns. So first, let's look at some history. Uh, Beam became available in 2016 uh, with Java, and then a year later, Python came along. And then a few years later, after being experimental for some time, the Go SDK was like officially released. And then um, just last year, we saw a few engineers build a TypeScript SDK um, in just one week. And it wasn't complex. It was just like the, the, the simple stuff. But um, this just shows how uh, making an SDK is very doable and, and feasible. And it's very plausible to say that in the, in the future, we'll have many more SDKs um, available for, for Beam. Um, but looking at this, um, like, and from my experience and all of us working in Beam know, uh, Java transforms are m much more hardened and um, resilient and r r r r robust. And the IOs in Java are m much more um, uh, feature complete. And they handle the, like, m most of the edge cases that we, uh, we have. And I think this is mostly because of the amount of time we've had to run into problems and work around them. And, fix them, and also because we have uh, a lot of users who use the Java SDK. And so now the question is, for each of these new SDKs and the future ones, do we have to go through the same process of running into problems and building these complex p-transforms p p natively in, in each language? Or is there a way to uh, uh, use already robust uh, transforms? And the answer is we have uh, access to robust transforms if we use cross-language. So uh, if you want to learn more deeply about the uh, cross-language and expansion service stuff, I suggest looking at uh, Cham's talk. But um, briefly, uh, the, the Beam model has abstractions for both P collections and P, P transforms. And so in a single pipeline, you can have P transforms that come from different um, SDKs. And um, the way we do this is we start up an expansion service. And then from, from a pipeline, we just go and dip our hands and take a transform and put it into our pipeline, and it just runs. Um, and that's actually how our Kafka IO transform in Python works. We just use Java's. Uh, connector under the cover. Yeah, so this this process has been available for a while now, but schema transforms uh, 
it's a new solution. Uh, there were some recent improvements to the Java expansion service that now allow it to discover schema transforms. And um, uh, going down the schema transforms path is a lot more simple and less convoluted than what we currently have or used to have. So what is a schema transform? Um, when we talk about the schema transform API, we talk about this. First, we have the schema transform provider, which uh, is an interface. And for each schema transform, you need to have a, interfa uh, a provider interface. Um, and each implementation of it ha is identified by a uh, unique ID. And it has some uh, extra information, like the expected input and output P collections that um, go in and out of the uh, P transform, and also we have the um, the schema of the configuration object that will be used to build our P transform down the, down the line. So we have the configuration object that we'll use to build our P transform, and this is basically like the parameters that you would use to build a P transform. So if the transform itself, let, let's say, is a uh, BigQuery read, uh, the configuration object will like include uh, the table spec or the query that you want to read from. So all that stuff that you use to build the I.O. would be in here. So if you give it the configuration, it will give you a, a schema transform. From there, we have the P transform that is uh, built. And that's our P transform. It takes um, zero or more inputs and produces zero or more outputs. And uh, one important thing to note is that it uses, it's restricted to uh, using be beam rows uh, as its data type. And that goes into why we call it a schema transform. So um, here's, here's a close up. Um, all the P collections have uh, rows as the element type. And the uh, schema transform API requires us to have a schema attached to all of these P collections. So each one has a schema. Um, and because we know what the schema is of, of all of our inputs and outputs, our uh, P transform is schema aware. So that's where the name comes from. It's just a schema aware P transform. Um, and the schema is used to like decode and, and encode uh, um, uh, fr from rows and to rows. Um, yeah. Also, one more um, benefit of using beam rows is that uh, we are now restricted to using types that are. Um, compatible with beam schema types. And we need to uh, only use those types if we want to send data across the cross-language interface. So we need to use data types that are understandable by all B beam SDKs. Uh, so let's get into it. How, to we, how, how do we create one? Uh, so here's the interface. Like I mentioned, there's the unique ID, the configuration schema, the from method where you build the P transform, input and, out and output collection names. The one thing I didn't mention so far is the dependencies method. And this is uh, basically uh, if you're using a transform that requires um, jars or dependencies that are not in your class path, then you would override this uh, method to return a list of the dependencies that this transform needs. And then Beam, when the pipeline runs, it will uh, fetch them for you. So I mentioned the schema transform pro provider interface. Here's the schema transform interface. You'll see it returns uh, schema transform. And the schema transform itself is here. It's just one method. Um, and this is called uh, during expansion time. And the resulting P transform is returned and injected into your pipeline. 
Um, right, so the combination of these two methods is where you actually use your configuration object to build your P transform. And um, in the future, I'd like to reduce this to just one method, but as of now, this is what the API uh, looks like. Uh, and one thing to note is that since we're restricted to having rows as our inputs and outputs, we might need to have a uh, uh, extra step or two that converts uh, from rows to our P transforms uh, input type. So if we have a transform in Java that uses strings as, as inputs and we want to expose that to Python, we need to have a uh, conversion step. Uh, one last thing is that, um, yeah, the expansion service uses uh, the Java service loader to look for the schema transform providers in, in the class path. So uh, we need to uh, annotate our uh, schema transform provider implementation with the Google auto service just to make it available uh, for the expansion service. So now that we have our schema transform provider, we can then run our expansion service that will look for that provider. And it's very easy. You just have to run the main method of, ex of the ex expansion service and give it a, uh, a port. And then it will look for all schema transform providers in the class path. And then it will run it and display it for you. Um, yeah. So then once you have your schema transform provider and it's available, it's in the expansion service, and the expansion service is running, you can then run your Python pipeline. Um, and to go and fetch your transform from the expansion service, it's as easy as just uh, applying this P transform, which is basically a wrapper that does all the work of fetching the, the, the transform, making sure the configurations, uh, making sure the configuration parameters get there and so on. Um, so you just need to pass in a few things, which is the unique ID of your schema transform and the expansion service address uh, that is hosting the expansion service that has your uh, schema transforms. And then these are the arguments that you would pass into the schema transform to build your p-transform. Um, yeah, and these have to be in the same order as the configuration schema you, 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 you defined earlier. Um, so if you, if you see the, like this configuration schema, uh, needs to match your arguments order. But if you want to just ig ignore that and have Beam uh, reorder it for you, 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 you can just set this uh, flag to true. And during, um, during uh, expansion time, it will just take a peek at the configuration order and reorder your arguments and it will just do it for you. Okay, cool. So now we have a demo um, that will show how all this works. Um, so Cham already showed us how to run the word count, uh, Java word count in Python with the old API. Uh, now I'm showing how to do it within schema transform API. So here's my word count transform. Uh, I just got it from downloading the word count beam examples. But I changed one thing over here. Um, basically, the transform reads from a file. It counts the words, and then it formats them into nice uh, strings. And then it writes the, the strings to a file. But I just re removed the write step, and I'm returning the strings. So, so now I have this transform in Java, and I want to expose it to Python and use it in Python. So I create my schema transform provider. And here I have 
Uh, here's what I'm going to give it as the ID. Uh, here's my configuration schema. I'm just expecting um, an input parameter that will tell me which file I want to read from. And then here are the input p collection names. I'm not expecting any input p collection, so it's empty. I will provide one output p collection over here, which is just like the strings of the words and the counts. And here's where I'm building. Oops. Here's where I'm building my p transform. Um, so as you can see, like here's where the configuration object is being is gonna be passed in, uh, and here's where I'll build the p transform itself. Um, so I just call the word count transform that I want to expose, and I pass in the uh, file that I'm reading from, and then at this point it's a p collection of strings, but as we said, schema transforms you need to have inputs and outputs of only rows. So I have to add an extra step of converting it to a beam row, and then we're done. Um, and I also have to give it a schema, uh, and then we're done. So now that I have my schema transform provider, I just need to run the expansion service. And I'm doing that with a very simple task here, which um, um, all it does is basically it, it runs the expansion service main method and it adds my uh, project's jar to the class path so that the schema transform that I have in that jar is available. Um, and gives it a default port. So let's run this uh, task. So it ran, and here's the expansion service. You'll see it's uh, at port 8090, the one that I gave it. And here are all the schema transforms that I have available, uh, including my word count here. So you'll see there's many more schema transform providers here, and that's because one of my one of my dependencies is the Beam G GCP IO jar, which has a lot of schema transform pr provider implementations. So all of those also show up because it's in my class path. So the expansion service shows all the uh, providers in, in the class path. So while that's running, I can then run my pipeline. And here's my pipeline. Um, it's a simple, I just use the schema transform that I want. And again, I give it the ID and the expansion service address. So it goes and looks at the expansion service at this address and tries to look for a, a ID called beam schema transform, blah, 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 uh, word counts. And then I have my configuration parameter that it will also send to the schema transform. Um, and then what, what I will get back is a bunch of beam rows. And so I want to extract the word count um, of each row. It will just be like the word and the count and so on. And then I want to write these strings to a file. So while my expansion service is running, let me run this uh, pipeline. Um, but I have to connect to my iPhone's hotspot because this Wi-Fi is very slow. So there we go, finished running. Um, and we'll see that it wrote a file. And if we look at it, it's the word count of the all the words in the Shakespeare, King Lear, King Lear text. Uh, so yeah, that ended up working. So, oh, also the the demo is available if you want on GitHub. 
Uh, I'm not sure how I'll, I can expose this to you, but uh, there's a readme, it's just a few steps of what I just did. Um, so, what I showed you was a very simple example, but uh, we actually have a bunch of complex IOs exposed already with uh, schema transforms. We have the BigQuery storage write API available in Python now. We don't have to write a whole new IO or like a whole new write method for the BigQuery IO in Python. We, we can just use um, the one available in Java. Um, but there are some limitations. And the most obvious one is that uh, we're restricting ourselves to using beam rows. And this is an implementation detail because this is a restriction by the schema transform API and not by the cross-language interface itself. Because the cross-language interface allows a bunch of different um, types, including rows. But we're saying we're going to uh, restrict to rows. And um, I think uh, I think that might be because we don't have a better way of restricting users to or developers to only uh, write in Beam schema compatible types. Uh, another limitation is we don't have all logical types supported yet, and if you're not f familiar with it, uh, logical types are basically complex types that are available as Beam schema types. So timestamp, date time, dates, and so on. Um, so uh, those need to be supported more to be able to use them. Uh, another big one is it still takes some time and, and, and effort to create a schema transform. So we still need to like write a whole new, new class to uh, make it available, whereas ideally we just want to like slap an annotation on a P transform and say, you're now available for cross-language use. Um, yeah. Another unknown we have is we don't have like empirical perform per performance metrics for schema transform, so we don't have like actual data showing what the impact is. But uh, if you watch Cham's talk, there was a question about performance issues there with cross-language, and you can t take a look at that if you want. And that's it. So thank you very much for listening. And if you have any questions, uh, please let me know.